Ehor is, uh, he drives the R&D engineering at, at MobyDev and specializes in experimental technologies ranging from audio and graphics programming to blockchain. And according to this, he always asks two questions. What if, and what is the exact goal? And the first one invites people to wonder and imagine. Uh, and the second steers these endless possibilities into really practical roots. Um, and very often I think that is a failing of these kinds of conversations because we tend to talk about the fanciful more than the practical. But Ehor is, is, has both the um, responsibility and the role as well as the wisdom to bring really both of those um, trains of thought together. Uh, yep, thank you for introducing me. So yeah, I'm Ihor, and uh, today we'll talk a bit about the uh, blockchain technology. Let me share my presentation real quick. I, I had to cut a lot of uh, this presentation to make it shorter, and uh, I'll try to not focus on how exactly things uh, are done, but more on uh, what can you do and uh, what's there beside the uh, overall like blockchain and crypto hype. So let's start with it. Uh, where we are, and that's important thing uh, because like there are thousands and thousands of coins and tokens created, and uh, usually people think about blockchain about like. Uh, I don't know, stock market and a casino had a child uh, raised in a bad neighborhood. <laughs> and that's, and that, that's, that's really terrible because uh, I'm trying to perceive uh, crypto technologies and blockchain and just as a tool, another tool in a toolbox that uh, helps you uh, meet your goals. And uh, that's cool. But uh, also uh, there is a huge uh, value for the crypto in the market already because crypto has been there for a while and uh, uh, the problem is that right now we are in the middle of bear market and everything is down like bitcoin is uh, considered dead every month and uh, still somehow struggles and uh, it, it really discourages people of thinking about uh, blockchain as a technology because right now it's more like a financial tool and uh, we see that uh, really wild swings between huge hype like it was last year when like everything went parabolic and uh, at the same time like this year everything is down and uh, let's not focus on the uh, financial stuff let's uh, talk about the technology itself so what we can actually do uh, one of the important things is uh, tokenization and uh, people try to tokenize everything. People try to make uh, like NFTs uh, of JPEG uh, images and a lot of people think it's stupid and sometimes it is. But uh, what more important is that like a couple of weeks ago, uh, a house was sold as an NFT. Uh, on OpenSea, you can see that transaction, it's open on the uh, blockchain. It was like about 200,000 sell and uh, it still had a uh, third party involved, but it is there. Like it, it's, it's getting somewhere and it's uh, the first steps that uh, could be done. And uh, actually, if you can imagine anything that could be tokenized and transferred from like one person to another or like uh, transferred from organization to a person or vice versa, that's a good thing. And uh, it could be done via blockchain. That's interesting. So the next step is like whatever a smart contract can. And uh, that's really important because like smart contracts are just a piece of code that are executed on a blockchain by validators. And uh, execution costs money, but uh, you can do basically whatever you want to make a casino go for it you want to make uh i don't know maybe an election system on a blockchain that works but we will talk about this a bit later so another thing is uh tracking historical records so all the transactions are uh timed and all the transactions basically exist there forever until the crypto and blockchain dies. And uh, that's a good thing because some uh, people decide to make that 
uh, as a tracking tool for uh, logistic chains, for production, for something like that. Yes, for now it is quite expensive. And uh, if you need some uh, tracking records, it uh, could be done uh, without blockchain and it will be much easier, much cheaper. But if you need that for some uh, additional transparency for your users to be sure that uh, everything is public, everything is open, that could be a good option here. So get into ownership. So as I said before, there is a sale of a uh, house. And uh, also, we have a lot of things that are on the blockchain right now and uh, moving there. So uh, sometimes we can see, uh, well, we can hear news from our friends that they bought uh, some tickets to some event uh, and uh, occasionally that uh, happens that when they come to a concert or to, to an event, uh, somebody already used that tickets and the tickets don't work. And uh, like it was a good deal because it was like a last minute deal for a really banger price and uh, it didn't work. So in this case, uh, if you have your tickets, for example, as an NFT, uh, as a token, you can clearly see that the person actually has that ticket that they can sell it to you and they, uh, they cannot use it themselves. So there are big things uh, that are promoted as like having tickets as uh, blockchain tokens. And uh, I'm hoping it will happen at some point of time. But for now, it's a bit hard to onboard users to these kind of systems. So uh, that could be interesting take, but it's not there yet. Again, uh, going for uh, transparency and privacy. And that's an interesting take here because uh, like right now, uh, blockchain doesn't provide you any privacy basically, because when somebody can track the exact address to your name, Somehow, I don't know, maybe somebody asked you for your address to send you some money and you give it to them. So after that, they can see the whole history of transactions on most of the chains. And uh, there are uh, completely private chains like XMR. XMR and uh, in this case, of course, you cannot see any transactions. And uh, there are chains that provide uh, privacy as an option or transparency as an option. And uh, what could be interesting here is that, uh, like we did a prototype of election system and uh, it's really cool because you can see that uh, it is transparent. Uh, nobody printed additional voices and uh, everything is fair, but are we ready to actually show everyone who they are vo voting for? And that could be a bit problematic. So uh, you can achieve basically both transparency and privacy by picking uh, proper chains uh, for your project. And uh, that's a big thing to consider. And like, let, let's not focus on the details of implementation. I will give some examples a bit later. So again, uh, a big topic of uh, non-disclosure confirmation and verification. Uh, it's a huge thing. Right now, uh, zero knowledge is used for uh, mostly expanding chains. Uh, like there are zero knowledge rollups that actually allow uh, big uh, chains like Ethereum to be faster and cheaper for users uh, by uh, doing some work off chain and then validating an on chain. And that's really interesting because uh, it's not only for that. Uh, basically, a great implementation of uh, zero knowledge proof could be used, for example, uh, for verification. And like you are renting an apartment, you need to confirm that you have certain amount of money uh, because they need to trust you somehow. Yeah. And in this case, right now, you can only show the document and uh, show the exact number. And with uh, zero knowledge uh, confirmation, we can actually have a technology that will allow you to confirm that you have a certain range of 
salary, for example, without disclosing the exact amount. And that's just like a simple, stupid example, but uh, it's a thing that could be really interesting. And also like you can uh, disclose uh, some confirmation without disclosing the information itself. That's a huge thing and it will be big uh, at some point because right now people are just looking for different ways to implement it. So that's really, really interesting. Known issues. Uh, for the blockchain, like people hate it or people love it. There is almost nobody in between. And uh, one is the thing uh, that people consider blockchain as a waste of resources. And it's true for many cases because like a lot of things you can do without blockchain and achieve the same results and uh, it will be cheaper, faster and so on and so on. But uh, some things could not be uh, done in the same way like a privacy uh, and uh, like privacy is completely fine. You can close your data and don't show it to anybody, that's fine. But if you want to have a, a transparency, that's a bit harder and uh, blockchain has it by default. And uh, also uh, if you want to eliminate third party uh, from your business, uh, blockchain could be fine because people, uh, a certain amount of people have uh, trust in peer to peer communication, peer to peer transactions and so on. So you can benefit from that. Uh, one more thing is uh, like volatility and skepticism in general. As I said before, like we are in the bear market, everything is down and people just don't believe that blockchain is here to stay and uh, everyone shouts like Bitcoin will be dead like this month or next month, so on. But at the same time, a lot of projects grow and uh, experience a lot of innovations and uh, implement a lot of things that uh, will be completely normal, maybe in five or 10 years, but for now they are just completely invisible for uh, a lot of us. So another thing is uh, transaction speed and amount. Uh, there are interesting situations when some game goes public and starts their uh, tokens on some chain and people go for that game, try to get that tokens and everything is down just because like the chain is not capable of doing so much transactions. So again, uh, if you're doing that just for the hype, it would be a problem. If you implement that properly and pick uh, the blockchain properly, then it could be fine. And uh, another one is uh, utility versus price. And uh, that's like one of the biggest concern that people have that like, Crypto doesn't have utility, blockchain doesn't have utility, and you can do the same thing without that. And that's the same thing to me as saying, like, you don't need internet because you can send, I don't know, a paper message to somebody. And uh, you don't need paper message because you can go places and just talk to people and so on. So uh, technologies change. And uh, we see that some things that were considered like innovative and out of this world like 10 years ago, 20 years ago are there and uh, we just consider them normal. So uh, my take on this just uh, like use it as a tool and that will be fine. So uh, just a list of examples here. So Reddit has special community tokens they are not for the whole Reddit yet, uh, as I understand, and uh, they are used for the cryptocurrency community. And uh, they went on the blockchain and they went on the main uh, chain recently. And uh, right now there are people who have uh, earned some serious money. I'm talking like thousands of dollars just for being active on a uh, social network and commenting stuff. That's cool. And also Reddit has uh, avatars as uh, blockchain tokens also. So if you are considering some uh, big scale enterprise solution and uh, you are curious about like how much does it uh, cost to have some tokens on the blockchain. So in this case, Ethereum could be quite expensive. 
And there are a lot of uh, chains that are less expensive and Hedera uh, is one of them. It's really fast and really cheap network that uh, could get your project up and running uh, for literally no cost at all in comparison to bigger uh, networks like more popular networks and uh, it's really blazing fast that's cool another project i wanted to mention is uh mina they have constant size blockchain instead of having like gigabytes and terabytes of data roaming around and uh, needing like a huge computer just to store and to process the blockchain and they have uh, different types of nodes and one of that nodes is actually 22 kilobytes in size and that's enough to uh, make some operations on the blockchain and that could be a good thing for like having a uh, crypto node blockchain node on your phone in future that could be there, uh, not there yet, but it's really interesting. So another thing is uh, like Brave browser. They use really interesting advertisement system because like advertisers uh, pay uh, basically people who consume their advertisement. And that's uh, really great. And that's done uh, through Brave. Uh, quick example of science crowdsourcing, Recoin and Banano used for uh, rewarding people for participating in uh, scientific projects. And Recoin solves mathematical problems, Banano does protein folding and like stuff like that. That's cool. And also uh, starting a new blockchain could be really simple uh, in some time because Cosmos SDK uh, plans to launch their interchain security. That means that when you start your small blockchain and you uh, don't know where to get that validators going when you uh, like where you get people involved. Uh, in this case, like smaller chains will be able to use the power of the bigger cosmos chain, and uh, that will help your project to uh, start growing without thinking like, uh, okay, there is not enough validators and something could be hacked, like 51% attack could be performed or something like this. That could be a great thing.